Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about stoichiometry, and we're going to combine that with the ideal gas law. So if you're not familiar with stoichiometry, you may want to check out my video on introduction to stoichiometry first, or you may just want to check it out as a refresher. So the type of question we're going to be thinking about here is let's say you're running a chemical reaction, and either the reactants or the products are a gas. If that's the case, then you can actually use the ideal gas law to think about how many moles of a gas you have or how many liters of the gas you have. So here's a problem you might want to answer. Let's say you go out and you see this giant hot air balloon being filled up with hot air. Turns out that flame comes from the combustion of propane. So they burn propane, the same sort of stuff that you have in your grill uh, that you cook food on. And you burn propane and it produces carbon dioxide and water and it fills up that big hot air balloon and the heat causes it to rise. You might want to know, okay, how much propane does it take to fill up that hot air balloon? And that's the sort of question that if you combine stoichiometry and the ideal gas law, you can answer pretty easily. So let's take a little closer look at that problem. So this problem reads, how many moles of propane does it take to fill a hot air balloon with air? The hot air balloon has a volume of 2 million liters, it's a big hot air balloon, at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1 atm. The temperature and the pressure are going to be big clues to you, as well as the volume in liters, that this is going to be a problem where you're going to need to use the ideal gas law. On the other hand, the question about how many moles of propane are used, and the fact that we're given a chemical reaction, is a big hint that we're going to need to use some stoichiometry. So how do we solve this problem? Well, it's useful to keep in mind this flowchart. This flowchart tells you the sorts of things we can do with stoichiometry and the ideal gas law. You can start with any of the information on the left-hand side in blue. So you could have the volume of a gas or the mass of one of your reactants. And if you have the volume of your gas, you can see here that you can go from the volume of your gas to the moles you have of that gas. And you're gonna do that just by using PV equals NRT. So PV equals NRT becomes this another building block that we have in our stoichiometry problems that we can use to go between volume and moles. Just like we've always been able to go between mass and moles with molar mass, we can use the ideal gas law to go between the volume of a gas and the moles of that gas. Once we have moles, then we're back to our normal stoichiometry game where we can use our chemical recipe, which has all of the numbers in it, all those stoichiometric coefficients in front of our chemical reactants, to transfer between moles of species A and moles of species B, whatever those might be, we can go back and forth between them. And then we can come out with moles of B and we can convert that then to volume of a gas or to the mass of a gas. In this case, we're just asked to get to moles. So let's go ahead and clear off this writing and think about the exact steps we're gonna do here. So we wanna know how many moles of propane. So eventually we're gonna to wanna to get to moles. So we're gonna to try to get to moles of B, that's our target. And we're starting off, we can see, with a volume of two million liters. So we're starting off right here. So really what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this problem in two steps. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that volume of gas, that two million liters, and we're gonna calculate a moles of gas. How many moles of gas does it take to fill that two million liters? And we're gonna do that with the ideal gas law. So our first step is gonna be using the ideal gas law to figure out how many moles fills two million liters. The second step is gonna to be to go from the moles of that gas, which is filling our hot air balloon, to the moles of propane. And the moles of gas that are filling our hot air balloon, what's filling our hot air balloon? Well, it's the products from that combustion reaction. So both carbon dioxide in this case and water are filling up our hot air balloon. So we're gonna go from total moles, which involves both of those, and we're gonna go back to moles of propane. So that's the path we're gonna take to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll keep that path lined out for us in blue. So the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is we wanna go from liters to moles of gas. And we already said we're gonna do that using the ideal gas law. And if we take a look at our ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT, we can see that if we want to solve for moles, because we're going to moles, that we need to go ahead and rearrange that for moles. And to rearrange the ideal gas law for moles, all we're gonna do is we're gonna divide both sides by RT and when we divide both sides by RT, then they cancel out over there, and we're left with the expression of N is equal to PV 
over RT. And now we're pretty close to ready to plug in our numbers. One problem though, remember that our ideal gas law always needs to have our temperature in Kelvin and our temperature is currently in Celsius. So this is a really important problem that you'll come into over and over and over again with ideal gas law problems. You need to make sure that you're in Kelvin before you proceed. And so since we have our temperature currently in Celsius, I'll just convert that real fast. And Celsius to Kelvin is a relatively easier, easy temperature conversion. All we do is we take our temperature in Celsius, 100 degrees, and we add 273 to it. So our temperature in Kelvin is going to be 373 Kelvin. Now, we're ready to plug in to our ideal gas law to solve for the moles of gas that's going to fill our volume of 2 million liters. So our pressure we see up top is 1 atm. So we just plug in 1 for our pressure. Our volume we know is that 2 million liters. That's the volume. And so we got to plug in 2 million there. So we have a lot of area to fill inside this hot air balloon. And so we've taken into account our pressure and our volume. Now we're going to divide by R. Remember, R is that gas constant, and it stays the same all the time. You might see slightly different R's, but in the units we're using right now, we're going to want to use an R that's 0 0.082057, and that's always the R that I'll use. And then finally, we need to multiply it by our temperature, which we calculated to be 373 Kelvin. And so now we have 1 times 2 million divided by R times our temperature in Kelvin. And that is going to give us the amount of moles we need to fill our 2 million liters. And if we calculate that out, that's going to give us a pretty big number. It tells us that we need 65,344 moles of gas to fill up that volume. And that's not just moles, but moles of gas filling up our hot air balloon. Okay, so that is the ideal gas law portion of this problem. Now we have to do the stoichiometry portion of this problem. So we know we need 65,000 moles of gas. And remember, this gas is made up of both our carbon dioxide and our water, because when we burn propane, we make both of those. So we want to produce in total 65,000 moles of gas to fill up our hot air balloon. And we want to know how many moles of propane did that take. So now we're going to go from moles of gas to moles of propane, and that's where our stoichiometry comes in. So we start off with 65,344, and this is moles of gas. So we have moles of gas, and now what we want to go to, remember, is moles of propane. So over here, at some point, we're going to get moles C3H8, which is propane. All right, so we're going from moles of gas to moles of propane. And the way we're going to do that, again, is with our chemical recipe. And... Since we're trying to get moles of propane, we look up at our chemical recipe and we see there's just the number one in front of our propane. There's an implied one there. And so we're going to put a one up top with our propane, C3H8. And now this bottom number is a little tricky because we want to cancel out moles of gas. And remember, moles of gas includes our carbon dioxide for our three and our, heart, our water for our four. So that means that the number we put down there is three for the carbon dioxide, plus four for the water, and that gives us a total of seven. And what that's telling us is we get out seven moles of gas for every one mole of propane we put in. So now what we do is we have our moles of gas cancel out. We're basically just taking into account the fact that we get seven moles of gas out for every mole of propane we combust. And when we divide that by seven, we'll get out the number of moles of propane we need. And to two sig figs, that's going to be 9,300 moles of propane. So that's how many moles of propane we have to burn if we want to fill a 200 or a 2 million liter hot air balloon. So here we've combined the ideal gas law to go between liters and moles and stoichiometry. We're going to do one more example of this using this same reaction. And this time we're going to use some smaller numbers. So it says how many liters of oxygen are required to react with 3 liters of propane at 1 atm and 300 kelvin.
So again, we have some good hints that we're going to need to use the ideal gas law. The fact that it gives us pressure and temperature means there's a good chance we need to do that. And we're asked about liters of oxygen and liters of propane. So again, a good hint that we're going to need to use our ideal gas law. Remember, this only works if we have gas in our reactants or products. You can't do this process with a liquid or with a dissolved solvent or with something that's aqueous. So to get an idea of how to do this problem, let's go back to our flow chart. So here we know that we start out with liters of propane. So we're starting with liters. It says we have three liters of propane, and what we want to actually get is liters of oxygen. So that means what we're doing is we're starting with a volume of gas, and we're going to a volume of gas. So we're starting, say, over here. Let's say this is our propane. And we're going to go to over here. Let's say this is our oxygen. And so this is going to take us three steps. We're going to go from the volume of our gas to the moles of our gas, and we're going to use the ideal gas law. Then we're going to go from the moles of propane to the moles of oxygen, and we're going to use our chemical recipe. Then the last step is going to be to go from the moles of oxygen to the volume of oxygen, and again, we're going to use the ideal gas law. So these flow charts can really help you set out a plan for how you're going to solve these problems. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I've kept with us the three steps that I said we were going to need to do. And the first thing we have to do, remember, is take our liters of propane and go to moles of propane, and we're going to use the ideal gas law to do that. So the ideal gas law, again, is PV equals NRT. And we're starting here with liters, and we want to go to moles, so again, we're going to rearrange for moles. When we rearrange this expression for moles, we get the same thing we got before, which is that N is equal to PV over RT. And now our temperature is already in Kelvin conveniently, so we can just go ahead and plug that in. And our pressure is one ATM. Our volume is three liters. We're gonna divide that by R, which is once again 0 0.082, um, 0 0.057. Always a lot to remember. And then we're gonna multiply that by our temperature in Kelvin, which is 300. So that's going to go ahead and give us our moles of propane. And when we multiply that, we're going to get 0 0.122 moles of propane, which is C3H8. All right, so now we have moles of propane. And you notice that the next step we need to do is to go from moles of propane to moles of oxygen. So we're really going to start this problem with ideal gas law and end it with ideal gas law. And in the middle, we're going to do a stoichiometry step. That's what we're doing right here. So we have moles of propane, 0 0.1 two moles C3H8. And now we want to set up a conversion factor that's going to take us to moles of oxygen. So we look at our chemical expression and we see that there's just a one here in front of our propane, an implied one. And so that means we put a one down here, one C3H8. But there's a five in front of our oxygen. So we're going to put a five up top in front of O2. And then we're just going to multiply through. That's going to cancel out our propane, and it's going to give us moles of oxygen. And we're going to get out 0 0.609 moles of oxygen. All right, that's step two. Last step, we need to go from moles of oxygen to liters of oxygen. And the fact that we have that flow chart to lay out these steps makes this problem a whole lot more clear. So we're again starting with PV equals NRT. But now we want to solve for volume, which means we're going to divide both sides by P. When we divide both sides by P, we're going to be left with just V. And we will know that volume is equal to NRT over P. And that N there is the moles of oxygen we just calculated. And so we're going to get 0 0.609 for our moles times our gas constant R, 0 0.082057, and then times our temperature, which is 300, and then all divided by our pressure, which in this case is 1 atm. When we do that, we're going to get out our volume of oxygen. And it turns out to two sig figs, it's 15 liters of O2. So that's how many liters of O2 we need to react with three liters of propane. You might notice something here. 
five liters of oxygen reacting with three liters of propane is the exact ratio you might expect from our chemical reaction. Our chemical reaction tells us that one mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen. And it turns out these coefficients also work with volumes of gases. And that's because the ideal gas law tells us that the volume and the moles are directly proportional to each other. And so really all I need to do here if I wanted is take into account the fact that I need five times as much oxygen as propane. And that means that since I'm gonna use up three liters of propane, I need five times as much oxygen or 15 liters of oxygen. So if you can follow through that sort of trick, you can get through these problems a lot faster. But you can see that we can combine the stoichiometry and the ideal gas law to work a lot of different problems that involve gas as your reactants or products. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please leave any questions below or subscribe to receive updates about future videos.